CBS Atlanta News presents Public Affairs on Peach. Yeah, listening to the sound of that will give you chills. Most of us hate it. Yes, going to the dentist, we associate it with pain and discomfort. And for people, it evokes real fear. But there are a few tips to make your trip to the dentist a little more bearable. Good Sunday morning to everyone. I'm Brandon Rudat, co-host of Better Mornings Atlanta Today. I'm joined by Dr. Heavenly Kimes. Dr. Kimes is here with us to kind of talk about that trip to the dentist's office. Good morning to you. Good morning. And thank you for having me. Yeah, it's good to have you here on the show. Listen, um, we talked about going to the dentist. I would say about nine out of ten people would say I hate going to the dentist. That would be true. Why do you think there is such a fear with people going to the dentist? I mean, there's so many movies out there, uh, comedy shows about <laughs> going to the dentist, and it kind of scares people. And if you don't go that often, it will hurt. I know that's what my doctor tells me yeah. now listen I will be very open and honest there was a period of time where I didn't go for five years because I hated the sound of a drill wow. but then I paid for it when I finally did man up to go to the dentist and I had about five or six cavities and a root canal so you do kind of pay for it yeah you do and you do have beautiful teeth mm -hmm. might I add thank you very much doctor I appreciate that and I'm a guy who loves sugar so mm -hmm. I'm cavity prone mm -hmm. I am cavity prone all right so um, let's talk about a few tips here that people at home can kind of take care of so that you don't have to have the drill in your mouth right first of all preventive care right main thing is only thing that can cause a cavity is sugar so if you stay away from sugary foods candy <laughs> soda different things like that right. you can't get a cavity second of all you have to brush you gotta brush and the most important time to brush is before you go to bed right. but I always recommend brush after every meal some people are more prone to cavities than others based right. on heredity but you have to brush after every meal to remove those particles. And the third thing I would say is you got to visit your dentist. There are areas in your mouth you just can't see. We take x-rays every six months to make sure everything is in order. So you have to see your dentist. My, my best friend is a dentist, okay. and uh, he does brush his teeth after yes. every meal. Sometimes we'll go to dinner, and then he wants to go home to brush his teeth, and we all think he's absolutely obsessed. insane and obsessed with it. I have my yes. toothbrush in my purse. You do? Yes. You're one of those people. Yeah, you I do. see it all day. <laughs> You're mm -hmm. like, I see it, and I don't want it. Yes. Um, so it is possible to never have a cavity. Yes. Oh, absolutely. If you eliminate sugar, Sugar. Uh, they've done studies. If you eliminate sugar from kids from the very beginning, you won't have any cavities. So me eating gummy bears on top of my frozen yogurt, probably not the best well, thing. No, that's no. not the best no, thing, it's not but the brush best right thing. after. <laughs> All right, very good. How important is flossing? Oh, most important, flossing, because it gets the areas you just can't get with your toothbrush. You have to floss. There are foods that get in between your teeth, stuck between your teeth, and the floss helps out a whole lot. So please floss. All right, let's go through some of the myths, shall okay, we? Let's yes, go sir. through. Let's go through some of the myths here because I know there's a lot of myths out there. And if we can, let's sh let's show some of the these myths up on the screen here. Number one, it is normal for gums to bleed when brushing. Absolutely not. Anytime there's bleeding in your gums, that means something's under there and you need to actually see a dentist right away. And that so, means there's an infection, right? Yes, there usually is an infection, some kind of periodontal disease, gum disease, something's down there. So go see your dentist. Because you know what I what I noticed is that when I started, when I really started to floss, I, I bled for a few days, but then eventually it went away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, my dentist recommended to me, she goes, don't continue using the same part of the floss if it's bleeding on one tooth and carrying it to another tooth because right. you're going to be transferring whatever bacteria is in there. Right. What you have to know is uh, dental caries is an infectious disease, so it actually spreads from tooth to tooth, and you can actually spread it by kissing those bacteria. The kissing, the, yes, I'm yes. sure you could get a lot of stuff by kissing, yes. doctor. Yes. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about this. Is it true, I don't know if this is a myth yet, but is it true that your bodily health um, it, it, not having good dental hygiene can actually affect your health. Most definitely. I don't um, think a lot of people think about that. Well, the thing about it is usually when you don't have good dental health, that bacteria, that bacteremia can go to your heart and cause heart problems. And not only that, it's always important that if you're pregnant, because that bacteria can get to your unborn child. See, I don't think a lot of people know that no, information. I really don't. All right, number two, all wisdom teeth need to come out. Absolutely not. Sometimes really? those wisdom teeth are in occlusion. A lot of people don't have space for wisdom teeth, so they'll come in malaligned, they'll come in sideways, they'll come in different ways. At that point, you need to take them out because they become painful and they actually right. can ruin an adjacent tooth. But if they're in occlusion and they're up and down, you know, you have your top teeth, your bottom teeth, no, leave them alone. Don't mess with them. All right, right, very good. Number three, if I don't feel anything, my teeth are okay. That's absolutely not correct. <laughs> uh, you have to see your dentist. A lot of times things that happen in your mouth, you can't feel them yet. But we always want to do preventive work before it gets to the point where you feel it. Because when you feel it, what? 
You feel it. That's right. Yes, you feel it. The sound of that drill just kills me even thinking about it. Number four here, cavities won't affect my overall and health. And we go back to this, right. this kind of factor. Right. I, like I said, the cavities, that's bacteremia, that's a bacteria. It can absolutely affect your health. Uh, ha a heart disease, it can affect your unborn child. So, yeah. Okay, what's the difference here? And this is just coming to the top of my head. And it's just like rapid fire okay. now that I'm thinking about it. Um, you know, there's a lot of mouthwashes out there. Some are alcohol free and some have alcohol in them. What's the difference between the two and does it matter? I think that I would prefer the al alcohol free because like the Listerine, it works. And I love, you know, those different products. But the alcohol free, you will use it longer. You'll actually keep it in your mouth longer. Because it's not burning your mouth exactly. as much. That's the one complaint I always had is that using mouthwash always burns. Exactly. And it doesn't need to right. to do the it job, right? Right, it does not. All right, how about when picking a toothpaste? Um, you always want to look at the label and make sure it's ADA certified. That's the most important thing. If it has the fluoride in it, the ADA will approve it. So you always want to look on the back for that label. Because listen, doctor, you go to the toothpaste aisle. Yeah. I mean, there's a brand and there's a make for everything. Better whitener and it, some do this. I think Crest says like Crest Plus. Right. How do you decide what's the best, tooth, best toothpaste look, out there? Like I said before, you want to actually go to one that has that ADA logo. We, they've done the research. they made sure that this is a good toothpaste. They have the right percentage of fluoride, everything like that. So and does the toothpaste that says it's whitening toothpaste actually work? I think Come on, doctor. all toothpastes have a whitening portion to them. So right. They but it's work. not like you're getting your teeth bleached in a bleaching no, tray. No, absolutely not. Because I think some people probably think that if they go out and buy that whitening toothpaste that their teeth are going to be glistening white. No, I think it helps some. But if you go in the dental office, our actual whitener has is 10 times more potent. So you actually see whitening when you leave the office. All right, very good. Let's continue on with the mist here. This is number five. If I brush my teeth, I won't have cavities. That's not true. Like we said before, sugar causes cavities. And if you just brush your teeth without flossing or not, without seeing your dentist, you absolutely can have cavities. All right, very good. Number six, if I knock my tooth out, it's gone forever. That is not true. It's not. What are you going to do? Actually, Take that tooth and put it back in your yes, mouth? Yes, sir, absolutely. If you store your tooth properly in water or milk, if you bring it to the dentist within a certain amount of time, yes, we can replace that tooth depending on how it was broken. Yes. Wait, you mean if the tooth is broke? What if you? What if the whole tooth is gone? If you, if that's the best way. Is if it? the whole tooth and the root is actually intact, we can actually take that tooth, if it's stored properly, right. place it back um, and put it back in. Yeah. And you and said to put it in a, what, a glass of milk? Milk. Why does milk? milk? Because it actually keeps that tooth from dying. Because mm. those teeth have nutrients in them. They're alive. But if you put it in the milk and go see your dentist right away. How much time can, do you have? Um, I would say about a couple of hours. Don't wait a oh. couple of days. But go to your dentist right away. All right. Very yes. good. All right. Very good. Hey, number seven here. Bottled water is better for your teeth than tap water. Absolutely not. The tap water has the fluoride that you need. Some of that bottled water does not have the fluoride, and that's where they come in with unfluoridated water, and people have more increase and caries and dental cavities if you don't have the fluoride. So Interesting. Some, yeah. so, so as a dentist, you'd recommend tap water? Tap water has the fluoride, yes. Interesting. All right, very good. Number eight here. You are too old for cosmetic dentistry. Now, one thing I will say about that, people are living a whole lot longer than they once were. And if you feel like you want cosmetic dentistry at 70, 80, absolutely, I would say do it if your bone is good. Now, you're talking about, you know, somebody who wants veneers. Right, right. right. If your bone is good, I've seen it. Some people take care of their teeth. Now, warranted, 70% of the people over 50 have periodontal disease, so we have to take that into consideration. But if your bone is good and you don't have any kind of disease, absolutely you can get it. Yeah, because I would dentistry. think that a lot of people in their, uh, well, let's just say even 50s and 60s, especially if they're smokers, right. you know, that usually you're going to have a lot of staining. If you're a pack a day smoker and you're in your 50s and 60s and you don't want that, that can be taken care Definitely. of as well. At least Definitely. with veneers, it can be.